Would you like to get hired on your next interview? Then watch this video. Personally, I have gotten an offer from more than 90% of the companies that have interviewed me, and I'm going to teach you how to do the same. Before we begin, let me tell you a little bit about me so you know where I'm coming from. Personally, I've been working in technology now for over 25 years, and I've been helping others get their first tech job or get promoted in tech for more than 20 years, and it's my personal mission in life to help everyone that gets a tech career get hired or get promoted. Almost everyone has the ability to get the job of their dreams, and I'm going to show you how to win the interview. But before we begin, we must make this clear. The interview is war. Only one person gets the job. It's essentially a survival of the fittest game. So to win a war, you need the perfect battle plan and execution. And we're gonna teach you how to do this. But even before we begin, I want you to understand this. In the words of Sun Tse, in The Art of War, which is probably the best book on military strategy, it's still taught in MBA programs and it's still taught to military officers because it's so critical in terms of battle planning. If you know yourself, and if you know your enemy, you will be victorious. So I'm gonna make this clear. If you know yourself and you know your enemy, you will be victorious, which means getting hired. If you know yourself, but not your enemy, for every win, there'll be one loss, and I don't like leaving interviews up to chance. If you don't know yourself, and guess what? If you don't know your enemy, you will win once and lose once. Now here's the situation which is the problem for most people. If you don't know yourself and you don't know your enemy, you will lose, lose, and lose some more. So critical to this is to know yourself and to know your enemy. Who's your enemy on the interview? The hiring manager, and you need to defeat them to win. So we're gonna teach you how to do this. So we must know ourselves and we must also know exactly what the hiring manager wants and exactly what the hiring manager needs. And here's the reason. If we do this, we get hired almost every time. So the first phase is battle planning. Now, in order to plan something, we need intelligence or information. So the first part of our battle plan is going to be reconnaissance. So let's talk about the reconnaissance phase. The first part is know yourself. So I want you to really look at and write it down. What are your strengths? What can you do better than anyone else in this world? And reality is, it could be tech or non-tech, but what are you better at than anybody else in the world? And how can you use that to your strategic advantage? What does the hiring manager want in his or her perfect employee? And what can you do to make the hiring manager more successful in their job? You got to know this ahead of time because we want to win the war. We also need to know what are the most critical skills for the job you're interviewing for. And the job description is not going to tell you that. And we'll tell you why later. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now, this reconnaissance phase is going to take you about 20 hours if you're really concerned about winning. And I want you to win, 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 and I want you to get hired on every time. I've been hired by more than 90% of the interviews I've been on, and you can too by following this method. At first, you need you to know what are your true strengths. And this is key. You must know your true strengths. Now, it's so critical to know yourself. I don't want you to just write down your true strengths, which I want you to do. I want you to ask the people that know you best, what are your true strengths? Have them write it down. And here's what you're looking for. What you think about you and what others think about you needs to be the same thing. And if what you think about you and what others think about you is not the same, chances are you don't know you or yourself as well as you need to and start figuring out why. We have to get this straightened out before we go in an interview because you must know yourself and you must know your enemy if you want to be victorious every time. Now let's go back to what can you do better than everyone else? Do you have amazing presentation skills? Are you an exceptional leader? Can you sell? Because sales skills are always important, especially in the interview. Are you extra emotionally intelligent from your healthcare career? Are you competitive? And organizations love competitiveness. Why? Competitiveness shows extreme motivation. And that is something that employers really desire. So these special attributes that we talk about, I like to call them superpowers. They are the one thing that you do better that you can use to your tactical advantage. Use it and win. Now next, I want you to find out what does the hiring manager like? 
So I'll give you an example. My wife is a bit of a shoe addict. She's terrific. She has over 500 pairs of shoes. And every day, there's three or four more shoe boxes that show up. And I asked her one day, hey, wait, what goes into your shoe buying decision? And she says, I buy the shoes that I like. I said, that's what I thought. And she says, what goes into your technology buying decisions? And I says, I buy what I like and the things that solve my problem. And she says, who do you hire? And I said, I hire who I like. And that's the key. I have surveyed thousands of hiring managers and recruiters over the last 20 years. And when I ask people what they hire, lots of times they say, someone I'd like is at least part of the equation. And we're gonna talk about what hiring managers tell you, but the point is, I've been asking people forever. So you wanna be something the hiring manager likes. And here's the thing, if you have something in common with a hiring manager and they like you, in that interview, everything you say will sound sweeter and they will be more likely to like your responses and they will be more likely to hire you. So you wanna be able to establish rapport or find common ground as early as possible in the interview. And we'll talk about that in the execution phase. So how are you gonna find this? Well, in today's world, it's a whole lot easy. You can cyber stalk the person. Go to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, see if they have a YouTube page. Look at what they post. You're gonna get really good intel if you really do some research. If they've given presentations, look about what they present on. If they're writing thought leadership papers or white papers, look at these documents. You're gonna find a lot of information right in these documents and you can use this information to find common ground, but guess what? You can use this information to find out the things the hiring manager is gonna ask you about. Because when we ask questions in an interview, we ask questions on the things we know. So definitely, definitely, definitely do your reconnaissance and spend approximately 20 hours here. Find out exactly what these people want, be what the hiring manager wants, and you're gonna get hired every time. Assuming you have the competency, skills, et cetera, which we're gonna talk about next. So I've spent decades and I've asked every hiring manager and recruiter I can find, which is so many, in 25 years in tech, and I said, what do you want in the perfect employee? If I could bring you a perfect employee that you would hire on the first interview, on the spot, what would it be? And here's what they told me. They said, number one, the person must be able to do the job because if they can't, I can't hire them. And they're very specific, my job and not somebody else's. I'm gonna tell you right now, I've done thousands of interviews and lots of people know how to do everybody else's job, but they don't know how to do the job they're interviewing for. And we cannot, under any circumstances, hire people that can't do the job. Now that's 50% of what hiring managers care about, but the other 50% is your key to getting hired because there's sometimes multiple competent people, but it's these other attributes that make, make you get hired. The next thing that employers want is someone they can trust. Someone they can trust. I'm gonna tell you right now, where do 90% of interviews go wrong? Someone bluffs on an interview. A bluff is a lie. I've interviewed over 5,000 people in the last 20 some years. 90 plus percent of them have lied to me. Do you know how many of them I can hire? A big fat zero. I can't hire people I can't trust. And I will never ask a question that I don't know the answer to. Don't bluff. Instead, we're gonna tell you what to do, but we'll get to that soon. What is the next thing that an employer needs? They need to know that you are competent and safe, that you know what you know, and they you know what you don't know. And here's the reason why. Technology mishaps cause damage. In the last year, someone made a BGP misconfiguration at Facebook, which took them down for hours. Someone made a BGP misconfiguration at Google, which took them down for hours. Now, these misconfigurations cost lots of money in terms of downtime, they cause brand damage, and they happen everywhere. So the, the point is, is I'm not blaming you know, Facebook or Google. Technology systems break, but people make mistakes. But the point is, if you know what you know, and you know what you don't know, you are much less likely to make a critical mistake and employers want to know that you know yourself. The next thing employers look for are energetic, enthusiastic, and passionate people. But let's be fair, do you want to hire this person? Or do you want to hire this person? I'm here, I'm excited, and I'm ready to work. Obvious, you want the person that wants to work. So show your energy, enthusiasm, and passion for the job. It goes a long, long way. Now here's the thing. Here's an African proverb, which applies to business in every essence. If you wanna go fast, go alone. But if you wanna go far, go together. And here's the thing, nothing great has ever been accomplished by one person as a rule. It takes a team. So organizations wanna know that you are that team player that will play to win with the team, contribute to raising the energy of the team, making the team better, and making it a better work.
What else do employers want? They want somebody called an energizer, and that's related to your emotional intelligence. Here's what an energizer is, someone that walks in the room and makes everybody feel good and makes everybody work harder. That's an energizer. That's the exact opposite of this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. The person that walks into the room and makes nobody work because everybody gets depressed after them or angry. So organizations want positive energize. Here's the last thing, and this thing is really important. Employers want someone that's going to go above and beyond. They're not looking for someone that says, hey, what's the work-life balance here? They want someone that says, I'm here to win. I play to win. I will do whatever it takes legally, ethically, and morally to win, and I won't quit until the job is done. That's what employers want. That's exactly what they want. You still need to know what are the critical skills for this job. And I'm going to tell you right now, the job descriptions are almost never going to be accurate. The job descriptions are like some wish list of who knows what. So you're going to need to do your research here because the job description is most likely garbage. And we'll talk about later why the job description is generally garbage. So go to LinkedIn. If you've got a network, ask them. If you've been brought in by a good recruiter, they'll already know the hiring manager. Or you can ask the good recruiter to call the hiring manager and find out exactly what they want in case they didn't do it. Now, not all recruiters will do this, but really good recruiters will definitely do this. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Now you know what hiring managers want, but I still want you to do some more reconnaissance. And in the reconnaissance phase, I want you to look at what are the hiring manager's goal. Do they want to be the top sales leader, best lead architect? Do they want to get promoted? Do they want to be on TV? Find out the hiring manager's goals and you'll because you want to show them that you are a solution to their goals. So I want you to know ahead of time, what can you do based upon your true strengths to help that hiring manager succeed and the company succeed? How do you find out about the company? Well, pretty easily. If it's a public company, like most of com like a lot of the companies that we work for in tech, they've got a financial statement, a balance sheet, an annual report, industry analysts say things. There's articles about them, so do your reconnaissance. Show up prepared for battle. The better prepared you are, you'll win. I know some Navy SEALs that say destiny favors the prepared. So be prepared and win, 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 because this is battle. Now that you've done your recon, we're building our battle plan because we want to win. Now here's the thing. First and foremost, you must be able to speak confidently and competently about the critical skills for this job not somebody else's. And I'm going to tell you right now, in that job description, there's going to be potentially 10 to 20% of information. That's the critical part of the job. And the rest of it is garbage, worthless nonsense. And you need to be an expert on your part and not anybody else's. Now, if it's a job description from a award-winning company like Cisco or IBM or Microsoft, chances are they've figured out their job descriptions. But most of them, be kind of like a wish list that would really require about 3,000 years of experience to be good at these things. Now, why are these job descriptions such nonsense? Well, I want you to understand the HR quagmire or predicament. A good employer gets 5,000 resumes for a single position. And a company like Amazon may have 25,000 or more open positions. So now you get 5,000 applications per position and you've got 25,000 applications, 25,000 positions open. Now, HR people could never look at this number of things. And HR people are not technology professionals, which means they can't ask you about a technology and know if you're competent or not. So what do HR people do? They come up with these long descriptions that keep other people from applying. And it's intentional. They want to fill want to let down from 5,000 to potentially 100 people to interview. You got to remember this. HR knows nothing about technology. They're not technology professionals. So the people that often get through HR, they get to be hiring managers, are as follows. Experienced in a lot of different things, lots of years of experience. And when we interview them, for the most part, they know everybody else's job except for the one we had to hire them for. So very often as hiring managers, we hire a recruiter, a good recruiter, and we tell the recruiter, this is exactly what I need. Help me find somebody so I can jump the queue and not deal with HR and all the things. And here's the reason why as a hiring manager, I don't have time to do interviews. I'm very short on time. And I can't just interview, interview, interview and not hire. I have to hire because I have work to be done. So I usually use a recruiter. And a good recruiter will know exactly what the hiring manager needs and they will prep you with that ahead of time and help you with your reconnaissance. Now here's the next part of your battle plan. Planning. So you're not going to have an elite military unit say, hey, wait, 
we're going to go to battle, right? No, they're going to train for the battle. They're going to prepare for the battle. So now that you know the most critical elements of the job, prepare for battle. Spend whatever time it takes to be good at this. I'm going to tell you right now, I will spend 40 to 80 hours preparing for the interview. If there are certain technologies that are critical to the interview, I am going to master them and understand them before I go on that interview because I want to win. And in order to win, I've got to be prepared. Destiny favors the prepared, so be prepared. So spend a good 40 hours of mastering these things. Now, of the technologies that you need to be competent on, no one's going to know if you're competent if it's stuck in your head, even if you are. They're only going to know if they're comp you're competent by asking you questions. They want to see how you explain it. Can you communicate it? Do you understand it? Because in certain positions, let's say you're an architect, if you knew everything but couldn't explain it to your customer, they're never going to buy your solution. So it's all about communication skills. So I want you to master this. No one knows what's in your head until you can communicate it. So I want you to master whatever technology you're there and frame your answers in this following. What is the technology? How does the technology work? And what benefits does the technology do for the company? Show that and it shows you understand it. Now, in most cases, a company doesn't care about configuration commands because you can pick up that up from the website. But they want to know, do you know the tech? Do you know how it works? And do you know how to tune it, use it, etc. for the reasons? Do that and it's good. So master that, be detailed and succinct at the same time. That's executive communication. Next, I want you to be prepared for some common and critical interview questions. They're going to pop up for the most part, so be prepared. The first one is, tell me about yourself. This is your chance for you to say, hi, I'm Mike Gibbs. I've been working in technology for 25 years. I'm highly energetic, I'm highly enthusiastic, and I love technology. I know what I know and I know what I don't know and I can find the answers to things quickly. And I've got a lot of experience in X, Y, Z, et cetera, et cetera. Now think about that. I'm telling the hiring manager, I'm hardworking, I'm energetic, I'm enthusiastic, I'm passionate about the technology, I'm building some credibility, et cetera, et cetera. I'm telling them in that first sentence that I am everything that they want to hire. And you must do that. And here's the reason why. When your first question is answered with excellence, the hiring manager looks at you like this. They look very happy. And then everything else you have to say is good. Start it out wrong. And it's like, now you've got to try and fight to get it back. So start it out right. Now you're going to also be asked the question, why should I hire you? And a lot of people don't like this question, but it's really important. This is, if you can't sell yourself, why should they hire you? They want to know what are your communication skills, your sales skills. And here's another chance to tell them you're everything the hiring manager wants. So prepare this. Get used to the common questions and have an answer. So you're not making it up when you're there. Tell me about a difficult project that you worked on. Or tell me about a problem you had with a coworker and what you did about it. Tell me about a difficult situation, etc., etc. The last one that always comes up, tell me about your strengths and weaknesses. Okay, this is a tricky one. You must be honest about your strengths and honest about your weaknesses. Good managers can read body language and they know when you're lying. I know I read everybody's body language and good managers are trained for this to some degree. So if you there say, look, I'm an expert on BGP, but I'm lazy, <laughs> interview's over, can't hire you. But I'll give you an accurate one for me. I am not the most organized person in the world. So I might say, I've got 25 years experience in architecture. I've got exceptional scale skills, exceptional design skills, exceptional leadership skills. I've designed billion dollar plus technology projects. I've mentored large teams. I've written thought leadership documents. I've coached technology professionals for 25 years to build the best careers. I might say that as my strengths. I'm an expert at solving customer problems with technology. Now my weaknesses, I'll be honest. Look, I'm not the most organized person in the world, but what I've done is as follows. I've come up with a series of checklists and, and checks and balances to make sure that I never miss a deadline and I get everything done as promised on time and on budget. And that's a real honest answer and it's something I've done. So show you've got your strengths, paint them, paint them, paint them. Pick a weakness, but not a showstopper weakness that show, and show what you're doing about it. You can't say you're lazy. You can't say things like that because then you become unhirable. Now, I want you to learn this response and prepare it ahead of time. I'm sorry, I've not had the opportunity to learn the technology yet, but I'm energetic, 
I'm enthusiastic and I love technology. I know what I know and I know what I don't know. So you can be confident that I won't make a mistake. And if this is really important for the job, I will do anything necessary to master this as fast as possible. But I really know a lot about X, Y, and Z, and I would love to discuss these things with you. Here's the reason why. We're going to have to take control of the interview at some point. We want the interview on our terms, and we want to talk about the things that we know and are experts on, as opposed to what the hiring manager wants to ask us to. And we need to control the interview, and we'll tell you what to do and when to use this response. But why is this so important? You can redirect the interview and keep it in mind. I want to make sure now that you know what the hiring manager is, so you can show it to the hiring manager. You can show you're the person of their dreams, the person they want to hire, the person they've been dreaming about and thinking about, the perfect interview candidate. So make sure you've got your three best strengths prepared and be prepared to discuss them. What is the tech? How does the tech work? And how do you use them succinctly, competently, and confidently? And that will go a long way to getting you hired as it's related to controlling the interview. Okay, so we've done our reconnaissance. We've made our battle plan and we've practiced the battle plan and we've trained for battle. The interview, battle time, war time, so let's win the battle because we've got to get you that job that you desire. Whether it's a cloud architect job, solution architect job, cloud engineer job, it doesn't matter. I just want you getting hired for the job you want. So preparation, you've got to get certain things. Make sure you have a good, clean suit that's pressed and has no wrinkles in it a good clean shirt that's pressed and no wrinkles in it. If you don't have one, buy one if you can that's gonna be fitted for you. And if you can't do that, find somebody you can borrow from someone from. This is your battle dress uniform. A warrior doesn't go into battle without the right equipment. This is part of your equipment and you need it. Now, if you're stressed, you're less likable. And also if you're stressed, you're not as smart. When we're relaxed, our brains are operating. But when our heart rates go above a certain point, we lose the ability to do certain kinds of thinking and here's the reason why. Right now, we're speaking with our prefrontal cortex, the thinking and logical reasoning part of our brain, where we're smart, where we can connect to people. When you get stressed or angry, what happens is the prefrontal cortex shuts off, and the amygdala part of the brain, which is the part of the brain we have in common with reptiles, reptiles kicks in. And here's the thing. That part likes to fight, and that part is not so smart. So if we're relaxed, we can fight better to win. We can show the hiring manager what we're, they need. Now, if we get stressed, we lose our capabilities, so make sure you arrive early, you eat right the day before, you get a good night's sleep so you are at your peak condition. Okay, now I'll interview you at the time. When you walk into the interview, observe the room and smile. Look at everybody, smile. Look at the hiring manager and smile. When you walk in, look around. What do you see? Do you see team sport things from the hiring manager? Do you see a black belt hanging indicative of the person likes martial arts? Do you see something that says Florida indicating the person likes Florida? And you live in Florida and you want to say, oh, I see a lot of Florida things. The point is you've got to connect with that hiring manager as fast as possible. The more you take in when you walk in the room, the more things you know that you can use to connect the hiring manager. So observe, observe, observe. When you see the hiring manager, look them in the eye. And when you speak to them, this is really clear, I need you to read their body language. Their body language will tell you whether to keep talking, whether to be quiet, whether to change the topic. You need to read the body language. So let's talk about a few things. If, somebody, if someone's doing this when you're talking, good news, keep talking. If they're doing this when you're talking, stop. Change the topics. What you're saying, they don't like what they are hearing. If you're talking to them, the hiring manager leans forward and smiles. Keep talking. They like it. They cross their arms. Brr, they don't like it. Change the topic immediately and or stop talking. Because this is really, really critical things for you to understand. Go through this throughout the entire interview. Answer their questions, smile, smile, and smile. And during this interview, you get asked a question that you don't know. Go back to that answer we prepared. I'm sorry I've not had the opportunity to learn that yet, but I'm energetic, enthusiastic, and passionate about technology. In fact, I love technology. I know what I know and I know what I don't know. And I can find the answers to things I don't know very quickly. And if this was important to you, I'd do anything necessary to learn it, but I want to make sure we build a good relationship. Wow, but here's my expertise, this, this, and this. 
What did you do? You just told the hiring manager. You're energetic, enthusiastic, and passionate. Some of the things they want. You know what you know and know what you don't know. What you know and you know what you don't know. You're competent and safe. What did you do by saying you'd do whatever it takes to learn? You said you're willing to go above beyond. You just told the hiring manager you're the person of their dreams. Want to know a secret? Neuro-linguistic programming teaches us that the person's brain cannot process a no. Hey, everybody, don't think of a pink elephant. You just thought of a pink elephant. So if you say, I'm sorry I've not had the opportunity to learn that technology yet, but X, Y, O, Z, the human brain can't remember anything before the but. So you're being honest with the hiring manager. What you don't know, they won't even remember it, and you go to all the things you do know. That's why we've spent so many years studying the psychology of interviews, the sociology of interviews, and how to maximize that as part of your communication skills. That's why I've been hired by more than 90% of all interviews, and you can be too. Now, I'll make this very clear. The hiring manager has work to be done, and the only reason they're interviewing you is they have work that needs to be done. At the end of the interview, here's the chance to close the deal. The hiring manager will ask you, do you have any questions for me? I'm going to tell you right now, do not ask, what's the work-life balance? If you do, your resume will be tossed to the side and the interview is over. Here's what I like you to ask the hiring manager. I like to ask the hiring manager, and I always have, for a couple of reasons. And I mean it. What are your goals? So that I know if I was a member of your team, I could help you be more successful. I'm going to say it again. I want you to ask this question to the hiring manager. What are your goals? so that I know if I was a member of your team, I could help you be more successful. Now, this is a power question. This is a closing question, and here's the reason why. You just told the hiring manager that you care about their success and you're willing to do anything to make them successful. Wow, that's like hire me right then on the spot. But more importantly than that, it's the job description for the job. Want to know if you're gonna be happy on that job? Well. The job description, like I said, in most cases is not going to be helpful, but this will be, you know what the manager's goals are, and that's going to be your job. So this is your chance to show them that you are, they're what they need, and also to find out if you actually want the job. Now I'm going to give you one last pointer on the interview, and I've seen people do this. It's a sales tactic. As soon as you get to yes, yes, I'd like to hire you, stop selling. I've seen so many people get a job offer and talk themselves out of the offer. Once the person gives you an offer, if it happens on the spot, and I'm going to tell you, with three out of the five companies I worked for, I had an offer while I was sitting in the room because they didn't want me to go to the competition. They made me an offer and I said, thank you so much. I'm super excited. I'd like to see what it is and discuss it further. But yes, I'd love to work for you should we be able to come to terms. Now you know how to win the interview. Ahead in the interview, do your reconnaissance. Build your interview battle plan. And now you know how to execute on the interview plan because I want you getting hired, cloud hired, cloud promoted, network hired, network promoted, whatever it is. I want you to get your first technology job and I want to help you do it. Whether it's a cloud architect interview, a solution architect interview, an enterprise architect interview, a cloud engineer interview, I want to see you get hired. This is Michael Gibbs. I'm the founder and CEO of Good Cloud Careers and I'm 100% dedicated to getting you all cloud hired and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Take care.